Well, it looks like Father Murphy's going to be a great show. Begins Tuesday at 8 on NBC, and I know Len and I will be watching. That'll help bring the ratings up, Len. Let's well, see Merlin uh, not in my face. I used to see yeah. him in my face all the time when he'd play with the Los Angeles Rams. It's going to be a great show. <laughs> This 1981 National Football League game is brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation. For 1982, Chrysler has the cars, the quality, and the prices America needs. By Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Acme Boots, makers of Acme Real Western Boots. And by the Bell System Yellow Pages. The first step, let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. We'll be back with more after this. You buy a new car. Chrysler is holding 81 sticker prices on its Omni and Horizon Misers and Customs. It's Aries and Reliant K, two and four door base models. 82 cars at 81 prices. And now at participating dealers, Chrysler Savings Certificates save you $300 to $1,000 on most other new 81 and 82 cars and trucks, depending on model. For 82 cars at 81 prices or savings certificates worth $300 to $1,000, come to Chrysler. This is the automatic Olympus OM2. OM2, top of a new world of single lens reflexes. Sophisticated, precise, world's first camera to measure light off the film for electronically accurate exposures. The revolutionary OM2, Olympus, camera of professionals, of all who demand no less than excellence. Take no pictures less than great. Olympus OM2, excellence by design. This Bud's for the men who took the Andrea Doria treasure back from the sea. This Bud's for you. This Bud's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. We welcome you back to Giants Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. And the Jets in front of the Giants by the score of 13-0 as we get set for the second half of play. Marv Albert along with Len Dawson. And for the Jets, it has been another penalty festival. They have been hit with six plus two that were declined. The Giants penalized only twice. Yet the Giants have not been able to take advantage. The Jets receiving a number of breaks in that first half. I'd say the breaks went mostly the New, or New York Jets way because here, they just before the half was over, they had to punt the football. It looked like the Giants would get the ball in good field position, an opportunity to go in and score. Fumble the ball. The Jets come up with it. One play later, Richard Todd unloaded the bomb to Wesley Walker, and now it's 13 to nothing. That wasn't over then. Ernest Gray dropped a pass going into the end zone that would have given a touchdown to the to the Giants. They even tried the fake field goal. Yeah. <laughs> they had two two or three men open, and he selected uh, the wrong one. They should have gone to his kicker, Danello, because he was wide open. But maybe he's got bad hands. I don't know. He's got great feet. I don't know about his hands. Scott Broder on the fake field goal attempt. Intended pass for Tom Mullody, the tight end that was battled away at the last instant by Darrell Ray, who made a sensational play to get to it. And the fumble by Alvin Garrett, recovered by Jesse Johnson of the Jets, leading to the Todd to Walker 39-yard touchdown pass play. In the first half, Todd, 9 for 21, 137 yards, but it has not been a sharp day to this point for Richard Todd. Phil Sims, 11 for 20, 100. And 28 yards. Richard Todd is just a hair off. Now, he threw a great pass to Wesley Walker for the touchdown, but he had Walker open earlier. Yeah. Now, it's, what happens is a lot of times as a quarterback, you try to guide that football. I guess it's much like a baseball pitcher trying to be too fine. Instead of coming back and rearing back and letting that ball fly, you're trying to direct it someplace. But Todd has got a 13 to nothing lead, and he hasn't thrown an interception so far in this football game. And even being off a little bit, they're in good position. This man, Ray Perkins, the head coach of the Giants, he's not in a good position right now. They're 13 points down. They're not on the board yet. They've got to get something generated offensively. Joe Donello will kick off to the combination of Kurt Sohn and, and Bruce Hopper. Two field goals by Leahy and the 
touchdown pass to Wesley Walker, accounting for the score. Deep kick by Donato. Here's Hopper. Change of direction as he makes his way across the 25 and to the 33-yard line. Good recovery by Hopper. And again, it's Byron Hunt making the stop. So the New York Jets Return will go to the offense. Hopper. Richard Todd at quarterback. Stop. There's number 35, Mike Augustiniak. Bruce Hopper in the backfield, or Scott Durkin. We'll Durkin's have to wait in. See. Yes, it is Durkin. Wesley Walker, Derek Gaffney, Jerome Parkham. And that offensive line, Joe Fields at center. Randy Rasmussen, the only man to play in every giant jet confrontation. All the preseason games, and now the three in the regular season. This is Durkin. The 35, stopped by the left inside linebacker Brian Kelly. Here's a look at that giant defensive unit up front. They either go with McGriff or Martin, depending on the situation. The rookie Bill Neal out of Pittsburgh in the middle, and Gary Jeter on the right side. Brad Van Pelt was shaken up, but he is all right, shaken up at the end of the uh, first half. And in the secondary, Haynes and Jackson in the corners. Reese and Courier are the deep men. Second and seventh for the Jets at their 36. We're just underway. Third quarter. It is Durkin again. Picking his way out to the 40. A four-yard advance. Clarence Taylor made the stop. And yes, another penalty marker down. It's against... Oh. Guess who? The Jets hit with another penalty. It is the ninth time they have been called. That it just makes coaches furious when a, when a man is holding on a running play. Because you, they figure, well, even if you miss your man, that doesn't necessarily mean he's Holy going to make the tackle. Offense number 65. Uh -huh. It's the center, Joe Fields. It's the second time also on Joe Fields. Does make a difference for that offensive center when he has a man right on his nose as compared... There's number 25, Scott Durking. Top of your screen to the right, Joe Fields. Number 65. Was grabbing a little bit, it looked like. Sets the Jets back to a second and 17. What's there, 26. That's been a passing situation. They got a throw. Nice move by Walker. Wesley Walker. Able to spin away from Bill Courier. You know, the Jets are the type of team that after the play is over, you start looking around for something yellow on all that green <laughs> out there. But that shows you, Wesley Walker shows you how important speed is in the game of football. Now, he made that reception, turned a little bit in that great speed, picked up valuable yardage for the Jets. During the course of all the uh, pregame media hype with players on both the Giants and Jets claiming this is just another game. It's an important game, but forget that it's Giants-Jets. Wesley Walker, one of the few who said, yes, this is a very important game. We really want to beat the Giants, and Walker has played very well today. That's Kevin Long on his first carry of the day, stopped by the combination of the nose tackle Bill Neal and the linebacker Harry Carson. Well, Wesley Walker and Augustinia, they're walking back to the huddle. They apparently feel it's a first down, but it looks very close to me. I was talking to, to, to Buttle prior to the ball game, and I said, you know, is it just another game? He said, are you kidding? He says, we need this game probably more than the... Uh, look at Joe Fields down there looking at We need this probably to stay in the race a lot more than the Giants. And that didn't even take into consideration that they're playing the crosstown team. No question, a loss for the Jets today would be deadly. A loss for the Giants obviously would hurt in their playoff drive, but would not be as devastating. They would drop to five and four. There are only three other teams in the NFC with better records than the Giants. That's Philadelphia 7-1, Dallas and San Francisco 6-2. First down at the 43. Todd was looking for Parkham. Now goes Walker. He had Parkham on the short route, but well covered by Mark Haynes. And then Parkham streaking the sidelines, but could not come up with it. This is the old stop and go pattern. I said in the first half, they're going to throw in front of these defensive backs, trying to get them to come up. Now here's the stop. Now he waited for the pump. 
that uh, Richard gave him, but good play by 36, uh, Mark Haynes. Second and 10 at the 43. Jerome Barkham, the Jet tight end, has had a splendid season. He had a great dimension because he's had the speed and at one time did play as a wide receiver. Jets are moving again. Take your pick on that particular sequence. Well, the pick is, let's go against the Jets. All-star offense number 72. It is Chris Ward. Chris Ward, the man hit for that illegal procedure penalty last week. And the loss to Seattle, that nullified an 80-yard touchdown pass play and has had difficulty again today. You know, the ironic thing about that particular play, that was a quick pass. And generally, on that type of pass protection, it's aggressive blocking by the offensive line to keep the defensive lineman's hands down and out of the face of the quarterback. Now, let's go the other way. Get the five yards back. But penalty markers down again. Jerome Barkham on the reception. The Jets now have been hit for eight penalties. It's cost them 65 yards, and two others were declined. I believe that was 75. That was George Barton on defense that moved. Now it's a decision, I guess, uh, as to whether to accept the penalty or not. I don't know how many yards they made on the pass from Todd to Wesley Walker. That's what uh, Marvin Powell, one of the captains, is asking the officials right now. To but that man on the right, defense well, was offside. He'll make the decision. No specifics. Uh, as you say, it probably was Martin. Oh, George Martin did jump off sides. Now, he may not have been the first. It is back to a second and ten for the Jets at their 43-yard line. Two minutes gone by. Third quarter. Jets 13. Giants nothing. That's Gaffney slot left. And now in motion. Bruce Hopper. Hopper could not get outside. Bill Neal, Brad Van Pelt staying right with him. Right here we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Mark Albert, Len Dawson, Giant Stadium. The Giant defense on third and eight for the Jets at their 45. It is broken up, but a penalty marker down, and Terry Jackson is very upset. They're going to call it on him. He was throwing the ball for Lamb Jones, number 80. What Lamb Jones did not do, he did not come back for the football. But I think they're going to call it on the Giants for pass interference. Yes, sir. 24, Terry Jackson. Automatic first down. Here it is. Lamb Jones, number 80. Pass interference, number Coming 42. down, he's stopping in That's front the of the down. defensive back. He's going right through him. He hit him before he went for the ball. And you're going to see his reaction. One thing that Lamb Jones is going to have to learn how to do when that ball is coming, he has to go back toward the ball because that is going to separate the distance between he and the defensive back. They got away with it then. Now the Giants hit for their fourth penalty and has cost them 41 yards. Jets have a first down at the Giant 39-yard line. That's Barkham coming across. Play pass. Todd looking for Barkham. Jerome Barkham picking up the first down. Brad Van Pelt making the tackle along with Mark Haynes. Another beautiful pattern by the tight end. He adds a dimension to that offense because of his, his quickness and his speed. Used to be many years ago, you wouldn't think of putting a tight end in motion. He was more or less regarded as a big blocker. But here's a play-action pass by Richard Todd. Coming back and firing the ball out to number 83, Jerome Barkham. Jerome's got six touchdowns so far in the season, as you said, having a great year. First down, and 
the Giant 25. Augustiniak. Trap play that did not work. Gary Jeter covering up. Mike Augustiniak playing with an injured neck. Man who has uh, played hurt earlier this season. Yeah. And Augustiniak is uh, hurt again. He also has the flu to put on top of everything else. And it could be the neck again as he heads to the sideline. Well, there was, he ran into a, to a wall out there. There was absolutely no place for him to go. It'll be second and ten at the 25-yard line. The Jets 13, the Giants nothing. Two Pat Leahy field goal. And Richard Todd for Wesley Walker on a 39-yard pass play. Todd is now 11 for 24. Let's see what the ruling is. Incomplete. He was hit hard by Beasley Reese. There's Reese number 28 and Jerome Barkham made the good effort. But broken up by Reese. That was a great throw by Richard Todd. He's been a little bit behind, but here's number 83, Jerome Barkham running a crossing pattern looking for the open area. And the ball is thrown really well. The ball is there most of the time. I think that you're going to find Barkham coming up with it. A lot of heat because Todd got nailed just as he threw the ball. Now for Jerome Barkham, he should have had that football. Here it is right here. Taking a look at the, the mid in blue. The secondary playing a zone defense. Barkham did find a hole. The ball was there, but he didn't hold on. So third at 10. the linebacker back to cover on the play. Quickness by that big linebacker. I'm really impressed with him. Number 56, Lawrence Taylor. That ball could, had it been thrown a little higher, a little more trajectory. See right now, the ball is coming where Harper can't see it. One arm by 56, Taylor goes up. Incompleted pass, bringing Leahy into the ball game. And it's a 42-yard attempt. He's hit his last seven in a row. This one is good. So Pat Leahy is three out of three on the day. Eight consecutive field goals for Leahy. And the Jets now lead the Giants by the score of 16 to nothing. The Jets maintaining possession for 420. Capped off by the Pat Leahy field goal from 42 yards away. Short kick. This is Mike Dennis to the 25. Out to the 30, refusing to go down. And Giant fans are looking for a late hit, looking for a personal foul on the Jets, but uh, no call made. Mike Dennis, one of the heroes in last week's victory over Atlanta on the return off the short kickoff. So it's a first down for the Giants at their 30-yard line. Cincinnati doing it to Houston now. And Miami over Baltimore at the Orange Bowl in the third quarter. Buffalo leading Cleveland at halftime. Pittsburgh over San Francisco. Tampa Bay leads Chicago. And Atlanta big over New Orleans. Right here, Jets lead at 16-0. And Sims looking to throw first down. This is Leon Bright. Nice stutter step by Bright. He's got the first down. Screen pass. By the Giants coming out, trying to pick up some yardage on first down. It was an excellent run by Leon Bright. Here it is. See the linemen. They stay for a while, then they leave. Klecko putting pressure on. The ball is out there. You see the linemen. 61 is Hughes. The center is out helping to block. And well, apparently they uh, marked his forward progress at the 40. is just shy of a first down. It's second and less than a yard. First down is picked up. Penalty marker thrown down. Rob Carpenter churning ahead to collect the first down, but a flag again. Lance Bell involved on the tackle. It's against the Giants. Second down and a half a yard or a foot to go, and they're, they're going the other way. What a costly mistake. Offense holding number 68.
it is J.T. Turner, the left guard, picking up the Giants' fifth penalty of the afternoon, and they have been assessed 51 yards over the five penalty call. There are certain times when penalties are going to hurt more than other times. That was one there. You had at least two shots at a foot to pick up the first down. One thing you don't want to be doing is taking a chance on holding on a running play. Second and 11, back at the 30. Play action. Short of the first down. We got more flags down. There's a flag almost on every play. You start looking for flags on the green carpet here at the Meadowlands after every play. Bill Sims in a conversation with number 99, Mark Gastineau, complaining about a late hit. It was a late hit against the, uh, the Jets. Now here they get a break with a holding penalty with second and a foot to go, and then they hit the quarterback after he's thrown the football. They're going to tack that on at the end of that play, so it's going to make it a first down. And in good field position for the Giants. They're not using their heads out there. I know this is an emotional game because it's a very important game for both teams, and it's a great rivalry. The, the Roughing your passer, number 76. Hit him in the face. Number 76, you're coming in right now, right? Just uh, You can't see the, the latter part of it, but you cannot go up above the shoulder pads on a player. The rookie out of Long Beach State, Van Rudolph, as you look at the uh, penalty story, and the Giants declined two other Jet penalties, so the Jets have been hit with 11. In, in defense of Ben Rudolph, that was not an intentional hit, but that doesn't make it any better. He still did it by throwing that big old paw out there and connecting with the quarterback right up the top of his chops because the official, the referee is back there. His job is to protect that quarterback. That's the man that he has followed. Over enthusiasm by Ben Rudolph. Here's Bright. Leon Bright getting to the 48-yard line. Stan Blinka, Lance Mel combining on the stop. It's a good thing that Stan Blinka had a pretty good hold on him because if he had broken that tackle, he would have picked up big yardage. It is a second and five. Five. Six minutes have gone by, third quarter. Yeah. It's been all Jets. They lead it 16-0. Three field goals by Pat Leahy. And a Richard Todd to Wesley Walker touchdown pass play. And the Giants with another first down. Gary Shirk, the tight end, hauling it down in a crowd. And that was an excellent throw by Phil Sims. He really drilled that ball. Looking for his tight end. He had a man in motion. Got rid of the ball right down the middle. The tight end is going, looking for the open spot. Good pass protection. You can see everything right in front of you. By good pass protection, I mean that if there is a lane for that quarterback to see. Right here. There's 76. Is Ben Rudolph. He has a special attraction to Mr. Bill Sims. 16-yard pass play. First down at the 37. Sims goes sideline. Diving catch made incomplete. Out of bounds. Mike Freedy was out of bounds. Covered by the left cornerback, Bobby Jackson. Johnny Perkins was down deep, and Phil Sims was looking for him to go originally, but he was covered, so he went to his secondary receiver. The thing he did, he didn't make a mistake in taking a, a loss by being tackled, or he did throw it short. It is a second and ten for the Giants, who come in at five up and three down. Three game, one streak on the line. Come off the overtime win in Atlanta last week. Penalty marker down. Here's Clicko chasing Sims. And incomplete. Again, Freedy caught it out of bounds. They may bring that back. That may be holding against the Giants. Because Klecko was in there, so was Gastineau. Sims did avoid it, but... That's right, an offensive lineman tried to grab him and tried to slow down their process so that they wouldn't destroy their quarterback. And you can see the expression on the head coach of the Giants, Ray Perkins' face, what he thinks of the situation. These are mental mistakes. Holding offense, number 72. And as Gordon King, the right tackle... 
who has been playing the best of his four NFL seasons. Four-year man out of Stanford who has been matched up with Mark Gastineau. Called for the hold, so it sets up a second and very long at the 47-yard line. Second and 20. Just under eight minutes left. Third quarter. Leon Bright. He took a hard hit. Reaching out to the 48-yard line. And the crowd here getting restless now. Well, they're, they're questioning that call. Of course, all the calls are coming in from the sidelines by hand signals from the coach. The penalties really put you in a position where it really makes it tough. There's Ray Perkins, the uh, the head coach. They're calling the plays from the sideline. You get in a situation where you're making a lot of penalties, it's putting you in a situation where you got to go 15, 20 yards to pick up a first down. Third at 16. And Tucko all over Sims. You saw the quick whistle there to protect the quarterback, Joe Klecko, coming up with his second sack of the afternoon. Klecko just went right over the, the left tackle, Brad Benson, number 60 of the Giants. That's the situation that gets uh, you in a lot of trouble because, take a look, 73 is Klecko going over number 60, just push, shoves him right out of the way and grabs the quarterback. Fourth sack of the day for the Jets. Joe Klecko now with ten and a half sacks. That is his career high. Dave Jennings punting for the seventh time this afternoon. And a good one. This is Bruce Hopper letting it go. But the Giants get a break. Let's see. No, it carried in. There's a case where he should have jumped up in the air, batted that ball back in the uh, field of play instead of trying to recover it. Larry Flowers thought he could keep it in at the one. As you take another look at the punt by Jennings. It should have been down about the two-yard line. All he needs to do is push it back right there, not recover it. Jennings thought he had it, but he didn't. A timeout with 6.46 remaining in this third quarter. Jennings that carried into the end zone. Jets first down at their 20-yard line. Second back coming through. And churning, Scott Durking. Stopped by Brian Kelly. The Jets offensive line, Chris Ward, Marvin Powell at the tackles, Randy Rasmussen, Dan Alexander at the guards, Joe Fields the center. There's Scott Durking in the backfield. Along with Bruce Hoffer, the wide receivers, Wesley Walker, and Lamb Jones and the tight end is Jerome Markham. I'm sure because of the injuries to the running backs that the, the plays are coming in from the sidelines via the wide receivers. Augustiniak here now replacing Harper. Nice moves by Todd. Richard Todd able to work his way out of trouble. I tell you. He did escape back there. 56, linebacker, Lawrence Taylor. Randy Rasmussen gives him a little nudge, and that's all that was necessary for Richard Todd. Now, he says, survive to come back and throw another pass. So he went down, but he shouldn't expose his back like that. He should curl up in a ball because you can't assume that the defensive ends aren't going to uh, spear you right in the ball in the back. Lenny talking from personal. It's yes, hard. yes. Eight-yard pickup for Todd. It's a third and two at the 28. Kevin Long picking his way for the first down. Kevin Long carrying the ball only the second time today with some nice moves. Jeter and Carson. Kevin Long has come in only in short yardage situations so far in this ball game. Durking 25 providing a block to the outside. He cuts back. He's running with his head up. Picks up some good yardage in the first down, maintaining this drive. Now we got 4.57 remaining in this third quarter. The Jets would love to establish a running game right now, keep the ball away from the Giants. First down at the 35 yard line. Todd chased by Taylor, he fumbles. And it appears the uh, Jets have recovered. Let's see. Taylor did not realize that Todd had coughed it up and actually walked away from the play. 
He could have recovered. Lawrence Taylor has been doing some kind of job today. Here he is, Blitzy coming in. The back trying to block him, but doesn't even hardly slow him down. Pops him on the shoulder pads. The ball does cough up, and it is loose. Spence got the ball. Still on the play. Somebody's still down on the ground. Crowd reacting to the announcement by the official that it is jet ball. They're able to recover. Second sack for the Giants. Looks like Marvin. Is it Marvin Powell? All right, let's take a look at that play once again. 56. Lawrence Taylor going after it. Look at the quickness, the speed. Now look at that right shot. Oh. Wham. <laughs> that is almost a penalty. Here it is again. Right over, but it's on the shoulder pad. If it was alongside the head, it would have been a penalty. It's an uh, interesting reach on Lawrence Taylor. Timeout is called. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stadium, and it was Marvin Powell who was shaken up on that last play. Richard Todd taken down by nose tackle Bill Neal. There's Neal, the rookie out of uh, Pittsburgh. Todd in trouble, nowhere to go. Try to run, and Neal making the stop. Setting up a third and 26. Back at the Jet 19 yard line. The Giants have come alive, Marv. I don't know what it would ignited them, but they've all of a sudden come alive defensively, and they're really hitting aggressively. George Martin, number 75, involved in that tackle, and we've got another Jet down on the ground. Number 72, the Ward. other tackle, Chris Ward. Ward is shaken up off the running play. Hopper on the handoff was crushed by Martin. A moment ago, the other bookend tackle, Marvin Powell, who came into today's game with the back spasms, was shaken up. Looks like Marvin is yeah, all he right. looks like he... It's a question now where they say, Marvin, Chris is down, you've got to go in. And I said that the, the giant defense really came alive and maybe it was that play by that young rookie Lawrence Taylor that got them fired up because they played a lot better on that last series. The Jets will be going into punt formation as they attempt to Chris Ward will be back with that Jet punt in a moment. Pulling it up against up and down Houston 34-7 in the fourth quarter as you watch uh, Chris Ward being helped off the field. Miami leading Baltimore. They have been down the last six weeks. 27-10 in the fourth quarter. Buffalo over Cleveland in the third quarter. 15-6. Pittsburgh maintaining that lead over San Francisco in the third. Tampa Bay now over Chicago. 17-3 fourth quarter. And Atlanta beating New Orleans. Chuck Ramsey punting for the sixth time this afternoon. He's averaged. They're going after him. Look out. They got it. They got it. Touchdown. And it's one in by the Giants. Beasley Reese on the recovery. Well, last Sunday... John James of Atlanta had his punt blocked, and Mike Dennis was able to run it in. A big touchdown for the Giants, and this could be a game-turner. I just said the defensive unit seemed to come alive for the Giants on that last series. They had 10 men lined up on that line of scrimmage, and you knew they were going after that kick. Here's Joe Donato. We'll get another look at the touchdown covered up by Beasley Reese. There it is. A good snap right in the hands. Nothing wrong with the snap. And here they come. And they had 10 men on the line of scrimmage. 28 Beasley picks it up. Easily gets into the end zone. And the Giants are right back in this ball game. 3-13 remaining in the third period. First and 10 from their 23. Chris Ward, not in 
in the ball game. John Roman taking his place, but Marvin Powell is back in the ball game. I think you might look back to some of the other punts by the Jets. A couple of them nearly blocked. That might have been on the mind of the Jets punter, Ramsey. First out of the 23 yard line, that is Walker in motion. Todd on the rollout. And a scooped up, short hop, incomplete. And his man open, just threw the ball poorly as low. Wesley Walker was out there. That would have been about a six yard gain, which would have been a good gain and would have quieted the fans down here. This giant jet confrontation, potentially the most intensive. New York area rivalry, the Met Yankee rivalry never did get off when the Mets were up, the Yankees were down, and vice versa. The Knicks and Nets have not been able to develop it. Rangers and Islanders have had it at times during the playoffs, but it's a shame that the Giants and Jets don't play more frequently. Well, that would be great day on a schedule and so that they play every year. Because that's what this sport is all about: the competition and the rivalry. This is Kirkland. Heading to the 27-yard line. Scott Durkin stopped by Van Pelt and Kelly. A report on Chris Ward. He was taken back to the Jet locker room. John Roman, the six-year veteran out of Idaho State, has come on, replacing Ward. Ward is down on the bench getting his, uh, his ankle tape. There it is, Chris Ward. Apparently they changed their mind. He was headed... Double locker room and uh, the physical game. Van Pelt made that tackle and his his elbow to get a shot of him is quite heavily bandaged also. As you see, third down and six. Intended for Jerome Parker. And Chuck Ramsey will come on once again. And he's got to be shaky now because the last time it was actually a good snap from the center. He just bobbled it. Looked like his his hands were shaking. Prior to, to that snap in the first half, he almost had two of them blocked. They have ten men on the line of scrimmage again. Ramsey back at his 12. The deep snapper is bigger. And he gets this one away. Leon Bright. Giants take over in superb field condition. A minute and 56 left in this third quarter. And Giants Stadium is going wild. The top of the sack. Phil Sims. Mark Gastineau showing us the enthusiasm that he shows usually at home at Shea Stadium. Time for the Jets to come alive now, and you're going to take a look at Sims going back to throw. Gastineau beats his man, which is King, gets to the quarterback, and gets a very important sack for the Jets. They've got to stop these Giants right now. Eighth sack on the season for Gastineau, number five for the Jets. Second down, 19. Ernest Gray, not able to hold on. He was surrounded. Jets, but the ball was thrown beautifully by Sims. He threw it right between the defensive men. There was a crowd there. You take a look at number 83. Right here. Bang. The ball is there. Pops out. Now take a look at Mr. Who was that? Ken Troy. That greeted him after he dropped the ball. And a cheer from the crowd because Gray has departed for the sidelines, replaced by the rookie out of Arizona State, John Missler, known for good hands, caught an important 31-yard pass last week against Atlanta. That's two passes that Gray has dropped. One was for a touchdown. Six! No, sir. This sack again. That is number six, and look at Gastineau. I wonder if those players still want to repeat that this is just another yeah. football game and it doesn't have that much meaning. The Jets quieting this capacity crowd of 77,000 that is virtually all Giants. 
That was the time to do it. The Giants had some things going. They blocked that punt, got in for a score, and the Giant defense, the last two series, been very, very exceptional. And the punt by Jennings. I'm driving it to Hopper. Ankle tackled up near the 35-yard line by Harry Carson. So the timeout is called as we take a look back at the last time the Jets and Giants met back in 1974. Remember the bootleg by Joe Willie Namath? This set up the winning touchdown in overtime. The Jets back to the offense. Mike Augustiniak, the ball carrier, getting out to the 41 yard line. And that's good news because Augustiniak was show, shaken up earlier in the ball game. He's back in the game. Got a report that Kenny Stabler uh, injured his throwing hand. And Houston trailing badly, trailing the Cincinnati Bengals. Four yard pickup for Augustiniak. Second and six. Lamb Jones is slot left. And as Augustiniak again picks up two more, setting up a third and four, Brad Van Pelt on the tackle as this third quarter comes to an end. So we are three complete here at Giants Stadium. And the New York Jets leading the Giants by the score of 16 to 7. We'll be back with quarter number four in a moment. On a beautiful giant stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. We are on to the fourth quarter. The Jets in possession, leading the Giants 16 to 7. Third down and four at the Jet 42. All right, we're all the way. Todd with time. He's got Walker. Wesley Walker. Down to the 23-yard line, covered by Beasley Reese. Same play as they threw in the first half. There was double coverage over on his side, and he got a defensive back turn. It's an excellent throw by Richard Todd. Wide open. Number 85, Wesley Walker. He is pushed out of bounds by Beasley Reese, but he got Terry Jackson, 24, turned around and got himself wide open. Jets first down at the Giant 23 off the 35-yard pass play. Todd to Walker. Opening minute, fourth quarter. Augustinia Farrell straight ahead. Carson and Kelly in on the tackle. The Giants with McGriff, Neal, Jeter up front. Van Pelt, Kelly, Carson. Taylor, the linebackers, and in the secondary, Haynes, Reese, Courier, and Jackson. And Carson on the tackle. It'll be a second and six at the 19. Richard Todd is now 12 for 29, 201 yards, one touchdown. No interceptions at either end. I said it beginning part of this game that they're going to be able to beat the Giants are going to have to be able to throw them because right there you see what happens for the Giants they're a good team against the run and Augustiniak was stopped by Carson the Jets come in with a record of three up four down and one tie a very difficult club to figure lost their first three to Buffalo Cincinnati and Pittsburgh Wallop Houston played that overtime tie in Miami, beat New England, clobbered Buffalo last week in a terrible performance, lost to Seattle 19 to 3, but right back here they have certainly received their share of breaks, but they've taken advantage. Third and four. Beautiful pick to Hopper for a first and goal for the Jets, but a penalty marker down. And the way Richard Todd is reacting to the officials. The appearance against the Jets. Well, Walt Michaels will tell you the answer to that one. That was an excellent throw that time by Richard Todd and a fine catch by 
Bruce Harper. He really drilled it in there. Looked to be John Roman, who had well, come on for Chris Ward. John Roman leaped about four feet up in the air, so that's a pretty good indication it was against him. Offensive holding number 61 grabs and takes him down. Yes, it is. The six-year man out of Idaho State as the Jets are hit with their 12th penalty, 10 of which have been accepted. 10 penalties. Right, two decline. Number 36, Mark Hayes. He's got Gaffney. Well, their feet set tangled up among each other, and down he goes. All right, let a third and 14 back at the 27. First down. He was just getting his field goal kicker. That was a good throw by Richard Todd. Getting his field goal kicker down a little closer. A better opportunity to make three points. And three points, very important right now. They're leading by nine. So three, in my, my calculation, will make it 12 points if they make it. So it would mean that two touchdowns would have to be scored by the Giants to win it. And Pat Leahy has hit his last eight in a row. He's challenging Joe Donello in that category. 48 yard attempt. Gets it up in a hurry. Good. Oh, Leahy is on fire. He gets that ball up in a hurry, which is really important, away from all those hands and the linemen jumping up and down trying to block it. He's hit two from 38, one from 34, and one from 42. Giants appear to be on the move. They have the defense psyched up, and the Jets able to come right back. Another field goal by Pat Leahy, and the Giants trailing 19-7. Kicking is exceptional. The field goal kicking, and Richard Todd came up with a very big pass to Wesley Walker. Got him out of a jam, got them into field goal range. The kickoff by Leahy. Leon Bright. Out to the 20. Leon Bright could not. Straddle that sideline. He had a lot of room upfield, but he could not stay in. A check of the scoreboard, Cincinnati. Cincinnati over Houston, 34-14, fourth quarter. Miami leading Baltimore, 27-10. That's in the fourth quarter. Also, fourth quarter score. It's closer now, 15-13. Buffalo over Cleveland. And San Francisco now leading Pittsburgh, 17-14 in the fourth quarter. Tampa Bay, 20-10 over the Bears. Important sequence here for the Giants. First down at the 35-yard line. Rob Carpenter out of the 40, but all down immediately as we continue to check that NFL scoreboard. Atlanta yeah, over the lead. 34-10 yeah. in fourth quarter. Look at this. Tied up. Seattle, Green Bay, 21 apiece at the half. So difficult to figure week-to-week -week situations of the NFL. The Giants clobbered Seattle. Seattle comes back easily defeating the Jets last week at Shea. Nice catch by Johnny Perkins. And a first down at midfield. A check that. Mike Freedy. And a first down. Bobby Jackson covering on the play. Nice catch and a nice touch by that young quarterback, Phil Sims. He has a nice touch on the ball, and he lays it out there with a receiver can come up with it. Now, some quarterbacks throw it so hard that it goes right through. But look, watch the concentration and watch the hands. Grabbing that ball with both hands. I love to see a receiver use his hands instead of catching it in his chest. First perception of the day for Mike Brady. Leon White to the 45. Three-yard advance, second and seven. Coming up for the Giants. Final score, Miami defeating Baltimore 27 to 10. A final score. For Baltimore, I believe that's their eighth loss in a row. One up, eight down. That's Perkins peeling to the right. Sims just did get it off. Leon Bright. But again, excellent coverage by the Jets. Lance Bell, right side linebacker, and Joe Klecko involved. Joe Klecko nailed Sims just as soon as he got rid of the football. If you notice as this game has progressed, the one guy that we were talking about, Rob Carpenter, you know, has not been a factor in this ball game since the first quarter when they tried to establish something with him. A 
significant third down play, third and five. It is short of a first down. Johnny Perkins had to come back for it, covered by Bobby Jackson. That was an excellent catch. That ball was about four inches off the ground and thrown behind him. He went after that ball and came up with the catch. 86, Perkins, look at that catch, thrown behind him. It's not the easiest thing to do when you're moving in one direction to have to turn around in the opposite direction and make a reception. Johnny Perkins, who caught five last week, including a touchdown against Atlanta with his fourth reception and the Giants going on a fourth and one. Pretty left, Perkins right. Oh, a hard hit on Missler, but he's able to hang on for enough time on the reception. Bobby Jackson clobbering the rookie out of Arizona State, John Missler, and the Giants pick up a first down. I'm, actually, I'm surprised it was fourth and one, and he threw the football as opposed to running with it. That's a good call, though, but he really drilled the ball that time, throwing it out there. Mitzler, he did make the reception, but he was greeted by number 40, Bobby Jackson. And it's a first down at the Jet 35-yard line. Leon Falls loose. Stripped of the ball, but he's able to recover. Oh, well. Right able to recover, 74, Ben Rudolph covering up on the play. Very fortunate for the Giants that that ball bounced in the right direction because he was able to recover it. It bounced in the Jets' direction on that synthetic turf and hit on the nose of the ball and it didn't go any place. Loss of five, second and 15. Giants trailing, 19-7. Block running, 8-10 left, fourth quarter. Trying to change direction, but it's a loss on the play. Again, it's Bobby Jackson from his left quarterback position. Excellent play by number 40, Bobby Jackson. It was a, an outlet pass or a screen pass to the back, and he knifed through about two defensive backs to come up with that tackle. Not only can he hit hard, we just witnessed that just a, a few moments ago when, when Missler was nailed. He made the reception, but he was also has the agility to, to find his way through a crowd, take a tackle. And Jackson only regained his starting job last week against Seattle. It's been a rocky up and down season. And Sims is taken down by Gastineau. Mark Gastineau has done it again. For the Jets, their seventh sack. For Gastineau, his third. He's going to injure himself jumping up and down one of these days after making one of those sacks on the quarterback. But what was happening there, Sims was getting pressure all the way. 74 Salam is coming in there. Now you're seeing 99 Gastineau finally making the sack. Ninth punt of the day for Jennings angling it in the corner. And uh, good punt. Getting it inside the 10-yard line. That's uh, where the Jets will take over with seven minutes remaining in this fourth quarter and the Jets leading the Giants by the score of 19 to 7. Why are people leaving the stadium? A lot of time left, seven minutes remaining. We're going to get on to route three in a hurry. Jets lead at 19-7. Jets first and ten back at the right yard line. Tom Newton, his first carry of the day and he goes nowhere. Tom Newton, in his fifth year out of the University of California, stopped by Mark Haynes, the left corner. There's Mark, number 36. Good open field tackle. Chris Ward, number 72, the offensive left tackle for the Jets, is back in the ball game. Apparently, he had uh, injured his ankle. They taped him up and put him back in. Lamb Jones has returned. The New York sack exchange has been very busy today. The Jets bouncing back from the quiet sack day they had against Seattle last week in Shed. Scott Durkin with a two-yard advance out to the 10. Carson and Van Pelt are right there. It'll be a third down and eight. 
Jets trying to get something established with six minutes remaining in this football game. Trying to keep it on the ground. A couple of first downs by the, by the Jets. And they would feel a little more secure. They should feel too secure, though, because uh, there was their one occasion they tried to punt the football and ended up seven points for the Giants. Easley Reese on the recovery for his first touchdown in the National Football League. Otherwise, it's been four field goals by Pat Leahy and Todd to Walker on a 39-yard pass play. Jets not taking any chances at all, keeping it on the ground, and they will be forced to punt. Scott Kirking again getting the call. And so Ramsey will come on. Scott Durking had both arms around that football, and I'm sure he was told in the huddle by Richard Todd, we can't afford a fumble down here. We cannot afford to give the Giants something. We already gave them seven points with the blocked uh, punt. But I would think right now, in this situation, the Giants would be thinking very seriously about going after Mr. Ramsey once again. Coming up, Ramsey's seventh punt. Let's take another look at uh, that last running. Here it is, 25 Durkin. Look at both arms wrapped around that football. When he's going to get, going to be met with contact. You see that the linebackers are trying to to dislodge that football. Lawrence Taylor, 56, was involved in that play, and they know right now, defensive players know that what they want to do is try to, once the man is stopped and he's not going any further, strip him of the ball. And a 10-man rush. Ramsey back at the goal line. As we take a look from the point of view of Chuck Ramsey. And good hang time by Ramsey. Leon Wright. That's a dangerous play. He was undecided whether to call fair catch, then decided he wanted to take it. Jesse Johnson ran him out of bounds. And when we return following this timeout, the Giants will go to the offense. Back at Giants Stadium, Marv Albert, Len Dawson, 5-16 left fourth quarter. And a do-or-die series for the Giants, who are trailing the Jets 19-7. Here's a little flea flicker. And Phil Sims did not fool anyone. Run out by Mark Gastineau. The Jets had that cover beautifully, Len. They really did, and that also showed you the speed of this man, Mark Gastineau. He ran a quarterback down, and Sims has got pretty good speed. Gastineau is 6'5", 276, about 280 pounds. Now, that's a fearful thought for a quarterback to know that you can't outrun a guy that's 280 pounds, which he wasn't able to do. You know, he came down in a very awkward position, and he had been limping earlier in the ball game. This is a situation for the Giants. They've got to get the ball moving. They need a touchdown. Second and 11. Leon White. Hit by Bobby Jackson, a name that we have been calling all day long. Bobby Jackson and Mark Gastineau have led the defensive assault in fact, if things continue the way they have been going, when the Giants look back at uh, the films, they will see a lot of number 99, Mark Gastineau, who will be playing himself. That's right. You know, uh, Bobby Jackson, for a young man uh, no larger than he is, probably 175 to 180 pounds, he packs a pretty big wallop. Out of the shotgun, third and seven. Look out. Picked off Darrell Ray. Could go all the way. That's Sims back. Sweeping by Sims, Errol Ray for the touchdown. Sixty-five yard interception by Darrell Ray, and the Jets have picked off Bill Sims for the first time this afternoon, and they have jumped in front by the score of twenty-five to seven. Five interceptions coming into this game. He was leading the AFC in interceptions. But none bigger than that one. Number 28. It's a zone defense. He's trying, Sim tried to throw it between two of the Jets. Now it's a foot race, and I'm amazed that some of these big men were able to run. 72, Gordon King is down here, right here. 72 is a big tackle. Darrell Ray able to continue on. 
Rob Carpenter trying to make a tackle, but it's into the end zone for a touchdown. Here it is. Sims trying to drill this ball. 28, Daryl Ray was reading that quarterback all the way. That's his responsibility in the zone defense. Daryl Ray with his sixth intercept of the season. Pat Leahy puts it through, and the Jets have added to their lead. 4-16 remaining, fourth quarter, the Jets 26 and the Giants 7. In Darrell Ray with his second touchdown of the season off the interception to send a good portion of this crowd to the exits and now perhaps it is understandable. With Darrell Ray running the way he did, they may think about playing him both ways. This is Alvin Garrett. Alvin Garrett, who coughed up the football on a punt earlier, which turned out to be a very big turnover. This is the, this is the replay of the interception. At the middle top of your screen is Daryl Ray. He is reading the quarterback. He's in a zone. He sees where the quarterback looks. That's going to take him right to the football and the interception. When you talk about a zone defense, you talk about reading the quarterback, you just had an opportunity to see what Darrell Ray did. Now what a quarterback has to do, he has to look that man off. Look the opposite direction, then come back to the receiver. But Darrell Ray was following Phil Sims all the way. Giants first and 10 at their 24 yard line. They are trailing now 26 to seven. Sims for Bright, oh is he wallop. And let's see, they ruled it incomplete. Had this been a close ball game, the Jets would be involved in an argument. And Leon Bright is hurt. Jerry Holmes on the hit. And able to take it home, but uh, they'll bring it back. It's a problem with getting into a situation where you have to throw, and the defense is just looking back, playing pass. And this is a real shot right here. Bang. Got him with the headgear. Got him up around the, uh, the the chest area, and he was going full speed when he hit it. Leon Bright, who has been an all-purpose back for the Giants, kick returns as a pass receiver, as a runner, and taking a hard hit from Jerry Holmes, the right cornerback. Right here, let's pause briefly. For station identification, this is the NBC. This is WNBC TV, New York. And back at Giants Stadium, Marv Albert, along with Lenny Dawson, as the Giants attend to injured running back Leon Bright. The Giants showing no offense at all here this afternoon. It has been strictly defense. In fact, the defense scored the only touchdown on the mishandled snap by Chuck Ramsey. Beasley Reese able to cover up in the end zone. The Jets getting four field goals from Pat Leahy. The intercept moments ago from Darrell Ray, who took it 65 yards for the score. And earlier, the lone touchdown pass thrown today. Richard Todd connecting with Wesley Walker on a 39-yard pass play. Richard Todd has got uh, over 200 yards passing against this giant defensive unit, but in uh, Phil, Phil Sims' case, uh, well, that's great that, that Leon Bright is getting up, but you can take a look at this hit. 47 coming up on your screen is Holmes, and he really levels him. That is a shock to your system, believe me. But it's, it's great that he's able to get up and move off. He looks like he's all right. He is actually a NFL rookie. Played four years in Canada. And yes, since no, the back trouble, oh, great able throw. to unleash it. Lewis Jackson, the rookie out of California Poly, on the reception. Oh, Mark Gastineau was looking for another oh, one. Oh, yes, Gastineau was going to run him down. And uh, Sims knew that. But that was an excellent throw by him. He just flicked that ball out there and got rid of it in a hurry. But time is not on their side. 3.30 and counting down in this fourth quarter. 26 to 7, the score. The Jets out in front. There will be uh, a miracle of some sort necessary for the Giants to win this one. Because 
look at you can take a look at the Jets, the secondary, and they're just laying back. They'll give the short stuff. They won't give me anything now. Flecko. And that is sack number eight for the New York Jets, who right now are in a position to tee off on Phil Simms. Well, that's what's happening. They don't have to worry about any running game. Those big defensive linemen, and they are big and they are fast. You've seen Gastineau run down people. He runs about a 4'5 or 4'6", 40. He weighs almost 280 pounds. They can tee off, go after that quarterback, not worry about anything but trying to get a sack. As you saw on the screen, it is nine sacks for the Jets. That's the correct thing. Nine sacks for Gastineau, Plecko, and company. Chris Hopper on the fair catch. 38-yard punt by Dave Jennings. Two minutes, 38 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And the Jets in possession with that 26-7 lead. Looking ahead next week, the Jets will play at Baltimore. And then they play at New England before returning to Shea, November 22nd, to go against Miami. And next Sunday, join host Brian Gumbel for NFL 81. All the highlights and scores. Late-breaking news from around the NFL. And then an NFL doubleheader featuring three key matchups. Oakland and Houston. Cincinnati going against San Diego. And Cleveland will go up against Denver. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area next Sunday on NFL 81. And the Jets will look to just run it out. They're looking right now to go down to the two-minute warning. They'll let the, they'll let the clock run down to the two-minute warning before they do anything else. And I'm sure the Giants, with, with them trailing 26-7 to seven right now, are not really interested in calling a timeout. Tom Newton with his second, second carry of the day. Ray Perkins and the Giants will play at Green Bay next week and then back home for Washington. November the 15th, the Giants dropping to 5-4. and four. Their three-game win streak coming to an end. As the Jets turn it around after the dreadful performance against Seattle last week. Right now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes. 1979, Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota. In overtime, Tommy Kramer unloads the ball. Ahmad Rashad makes a spectacular leaping catch and steals the pass away from Green Bay. He turns on the speed, straight arms, and gallops his way to a 27-21 victory over the Packers on the game's final play. Alcoa can't wait. Here come the aluminum cans headed for recycling. Today, billions are tumbling in. And that's good news, because recycling helps the economy by creating thousands of new jobs, by relieving overburdened landfills, by paying millions of dollars to collectors, and by saving energy, a full 95% of the energy needed to make new aluminum from bauxite. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Omeyer. The coordinating producer of NFL football is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast, produced by Larry Cirillo, directed by Ted Nathanson, technical director Bill Toby, and associate director John J. Filipelli. Second and seven, Tom Newton again, as the Jets just look to run it out. Carson and Taylor in on the tackle. Taylor. So a terrific afternoon here at Giant Stadium for the New York Jets coming up with nine sacks, four by number 99 Mark Gastineau. No question in the first half, the Jets got every conceivable break, able to take advantage despite the fact that they were hit hard by penalties. You would know this is the same team. Now, when you talk about intensity and concentration on a football game, the Jets, I saw them last week, it's a different team today than the one that played against Seattle a week ago. It is a third and three. Newton again. Let you feel perhaps that could have worked in their favor and they won easily over the Seahawks. Perhaps they would not have been as well prepared this week. Well, I think it's a young team and it just shows them that if you're going to mature, you have to approach this in a business-like manner and that every week 
you have to perform with consistency. You have to eliminate the peaks and the valleys. The Jets have had a lot of peaks and valleys. They have to learn how to be a consistent football team. But one thing it should tell them, well, if we can play like this today, there's no reason why we can't do it next week. Well, that's why next week will be most interesting. They're going up against a weak club again in the Baltimore Colts. And Baltimore, after being sky high, I would think for a game against the Giants. Let's see how they will fare against the Colts, who have been dreadful. The Colts have lost eight ball games in a row. Now that's that's disheartening. I recall last year was the Saints or the Aints that had dropped yes. what 14 ball games in a row. That's when, as a player, you don't you know you don't show up any place other than the practice field. Go home. Chuck Ramsey will punt from his 36-yard line. They got a bad rush. They'll go after it. They've got no other choice. Alvin Garrett is back. They're around the 30-second clock down to three seconds. This is Garrett changing his mind. Oh, two Jets run into each other. 27 was uh, Jesse Johnson. One yard line. The Jets did something that the Giants didn't do. They didn't try to fall on the ball. They just batted it backwards. And now the Giants have just, what, 99 yards to go to score. You saw there's Jesse, 27 and 26, Donald Dykes. And their excitement to get uh, to the ball involved in that collision. A 48-yard punt by Ramsey with 20 seconds remaining in the game. And the Jets will make it two out of three overall in regular season play against the Giants. Walt Michaels will make it 6-0. and He is 5-0 and in preseason play. First and 10 at the 1. This is Jackson. Stopped by Troy out of the five. Seventh round draft pick Lewis Jackson out of California Poly. And that will wrap it. The Giants, a disheartened club, walking off the field. I do see some Giants coming across to congratulate uh, Jet players led by Brad Van Pelt. But the Jets coming up very strong here this afternoon. Four field goals by Pat Leahy. 39-yard touchdown pass play. Todd to Walker and the McEnroe trying to hold off the raging Connors.